Okay, hi everyone. Um, so I want to. I, I was originally intending to do this project later, but in thinking about it in this week that I haven't been at school, um, I was thinking that it actually makes maybe more sense to show this to you guys now and have you guys attempt this and and th start thinking about it before we get into the Cube City thing. It might help you um, help you understand some of that. So. Uh, let's get into this. Basically, what I want to talk about is now that you guys are understanding how to draw these forms in a line, now we want to start thinking about, okay, well, how do you render them tonally? So how do you make them look more realistic? And uh, so let's start talking about that. Um, the basic idea is this. If you have two flat planes like this, uh, nothing much is happening. We understand they're different, but they read very flat. They don't read as any, having any kind of depth. But as soon as we add a gradation to them, something like that, it's the fact that these lines are straight still doesn't give it that much depth, but the gradations start to suggest things. And now this is really kind of an important point because I want you guys to, if you leave this lecture, I want you to understand that everything is gradating every surface you see. Um, even when you don't think it is, it's gradating. Um, there's, we can talk about this more in class, but there's some simple experiments you can do to prove it to yourself. But if that's all you get out of this lecture, that's really the kind of the big idea. Now, I want you to pay attention to this. Now I'm going to tell you in advance what I'm going to do. Um, and it's going to seem I think even more impressive because of that. <coughs> Excuse me. When you look at these sides, these are basically the, the disembodied sides of a cube along with its shadow. Now, when you see them this way, we can't help but see them as flat shapes uh, in a flat plane. Even though I can tell you, yeah, they're the three sides of the cube, because they're not organized correctly, we don't see them properly. And, and this is really kind of a nice, it's a very telling clue to how our psychology works in terms of vision. Um, and now if I put them closer together and you see them start to, okay, now you can tell what arrangement they're in and you can start to get a sense of form uh, and our brain kind of finishes up a lot of it, but it still isn't that effective or at least it isn't that effective when you compare it to this next si slide. Now take a look at the difference between this and this in terms of solidity. It's hard to believe that they're the same shapes, but they really are. All I did was just, you know, moved them around, but they are the exact same shapes. But our brain looks at this and thinks of it as being much more, um, much more convincing in terms of its dimensional qualities, in terms of its, uh, it, it feels like a three-dimensional surface now, it's still a two-dimensional surface. So again, just take a look at the difference between this and that. It's a dramatic difference. So, you know, I want you to understand this because it's, it's really one of the profound truths of art. Okay, so when you go to the next slide, Hang on a second. Um, so the key thing behind all this, or, or one of the key points of this lecture is, anytime you have a, a change in a plane, anytime a, cha a plane changes direction, you have a tonal change. Okay, this is important because when you get into more complicated things, you you know, for instance, a cylinder, um, that's why a cylinder gradates because it's continually changing its plane relative to the viewer. All right, so let's look at some additional things. So what a, what affects the value that you see? You know, what affects how light or dark something is? The the primary thing, most people would say, it is the local value. It's actually not the local value. The local value is fairly minor. Um, the biggest factors are the strength of the light source and the angle of reflection, or what physicists call the angle of incidence. Those two factors are really probably 90% of the ballgame. Um, there, there's a whole bunch of 
stuff we can get into. Remind me of it in class. Remind me about the uh, gradating plane grayscale. Um, but really, people tend to think the local value is very important. Local value is just a way of saying, you know, okay, grass is green, fire engines are red, the sky is blue. Um, that's an idea of local color. Local value is the same kind of thing. Coal is black and snow is white. Um, but it's a lot more complex than that. Local value is really, it's, it has an effect, but it's not as important as you think. Also, reflected light is something that we tend to focus on. We tend to overemphasize. Um, and it also is not that important, and I'll discuss that more in class as well. Oh, by the way, I refer to it here as inter-reflected light, because technically all light you see is reflected light, so it's just something I, I'm saying here so you understand it a little differently. Okay, so anyway, if you take a look at this, this is our basic cube, all right? But notice there are some issues with it. One, it's completely flat. Uh, meaning the tones are completely flat. Now it does give us a sense of form because we have different planes at different tones, but none of these tones are gradating, and that makes a big difference. All right, the other thing that's important about this is it, it's, it's useful to illustrate a couple of ideas. One of them is this, which is you want to keep your eye on these kinds of junctions. When you're painting anything, when you're drawing anything, Look for areas like this where you can see three tones juxtaposed right next to each other. They're immediate neighbors because when they are immediate neighbors like this, you can really start to judge them relative to one another. So um, in any case, when you're out painting, when you're out drawing, always look for an area where you can see three values simultaneously like this. All right, now you know, what does this tell us? What does this image tell us? It really tells us quite a bit. Um, you know, for instance, we can know from the angle of the shadow, because we understand the geometry of shadows, we can know that the light is off in this direction. We don't know exactly how far away or exactly how strong, but we know it's off in this direction. Now, based upon this, we can make some judgments, or we can make some pretty educated guesses. All right, now, um, as an example, we can guess that the gradations are something like this. Now, why are the gradations something like this? This is going to take a second, but let me, let me do my best here. All right. What I want you to notice is why would this area be darker than this area for starters you know the lights come we know the light is coming say from this angle and it's coming from over here so it's this is the height of the light this is the the angle of it relative to the object but why would this area be lighter than this area up here the reason is because it's closer to the ground what happens is light comes past the objects hits these areas in here and bounces back into the bottom of the object. So the bottom of the object, and the same thing is happening on the light side. The light is coming down here, hitting, and then, then bouncing into the bottom of the object. So, and, and more photons are hitting these areas down here than are hitting these areas up here. So when you have a vertical plane resting on a surface, the bottom of the plane is, if the light is coming from above, the bottom of the plane is gonna be a little brighter. Hope that makes sense. It's kind of an interesting thing. When you, when you start getting into this, it's kind of endless, but um, it's fascinating. Now, the other thing is you can notice that this side of the cube is lighter than this side of the cube. Why? Because the light's coming from this side. Okay, so if the light's coming from this side, there's going to be a shorter path to the eye, and therefore the light's going to be a little bit brighter. Now, why would this be lighter than this in here? Okay, let me start erasing some of this. Okay, whoops, let me go back one slide. So why would this here be lighter than this? 
The reason that would happen is because if you have to imagine kind of an atmospheric umbrella. Um, the quick version of what an atmospheric umbrella is is this. The sky is constantly scattering light. It's like a low level, it's like a very faint light bulb. You have to imagine that if there were no other light sources, if we truly had a single light source, we would see nothing in here. All of this would be just pure black because nothing would be getting into in there. What happens is the lights, in addition to coming down towards the object, is also kind of scattering out and scattering down like this. And essentially it's creating a, a secondary light source you know, all around the object. Now what that's doing is that's causing things like the farther the shadow gets from the object, the paler and the blurrier these edges should be getting. Okay? That's just something that happens with space. It's an atmospheric perspective effect. Uh, the other things that happen. Um, let's see. Let me go back to this one. Um, the other things that happen, things like uh, this this edge here being a little bit brighter than this edge. There's two reasons for this. One, this edge here is right next to this edge. It's next to a dark edge. So the fact that there's this dramatic contrast between these two, what, what it ends up doing is it ends up making, um, making things feel very dramatically contrasty and so there's a simultaneous contrast effect that happens here also because this is closer to us more of the light is bouncing off of this area and getting to our eye okay so those are some of the basics and so if you imagine you know if you imagine where the lights coming from you can see that usually wherever the light path is shortest say like along here or along here those areas are going to be lighter than the longer paths that the light has to take. Now, also you're going to have reflected light situations where these areas are receiving additional light. Um, this area here is receiving the least amount of light and is also darkest and appears to be darkest because it's also next to these areas which are, appear to be the brightest and second, secondary, second brightest areas. Okay, so Continuing a little bit here. Let me wipe this out. Now look at the difference in effect of just adding a few highlights along here. A few highlights, a very small cast shadow here, and then the cast shadow here. And then look at it relative to the flat planes. And look at the difference in the dimensional effects. So this is the kind of thing that I want you to understand from this project. Okay, now, so going through this real quickly, you can imagine this in two dimensions, you know, kind of how the light works. Now here's another thing I want you to imagine, like if we see just a flat plane, if we take our cube out of this, what does this flat plane tell us? What this flat plane tells us is the lights over here, you know, because here the light takes longer to get to our eye and it's a little bit darker. Now you might think this wouldn't make much of a difference but if we drop our cube in it actually adds a lot and again here you might think oh well it's not that big of a difference but look at it without the gradation and look at the difference. So it's really kind of a huge difference that that gradating plane gives that sense of space. Now that's something I'm gonna want to see on your cube drawings on your cube renderings. Okay, so I gotta finish this up real quick. So going through this, you can imagine doing things like putting in a reflection or a, a hazy reflection. Notice there's no cast shadow anymore. Don't worry about this though on your rendering. You know, now what does this tell you? This tells you that there's a bright local light source. This tells you that the object is dark because there isn't as much contrast between the lit sides and the shadow sides. All right, so in closing with this part of the thing, what I want to talk about, what I want you to do is try and work out your rendering 
and we'll talk about it next week. Thank you.